Hey guys, this is my second video on Evernote. Uh, the first one, I showed you how to get started, how, this, uh, how Evernote's set up, and a few of the basic features. Uh, this video I'm going to talk about uh, very quickly how you can use Evernote as a student and some of the possibilities. Um, I've already mentioned uh, the use of notebooks um, and notes and keeping organized in that way. And the most obvious way you could see this being used as um, a digital notebook. Um, whether you're in class uh, we're, uh, using it or whether you're using it on some kind of smartphone or tablet device, um, you would easily be able to um, open up a new note, uh, start typing uh, notes in the class, and staying organized. I want to show you about a cool feature over here in the notebook section. And what Evernote calls it is stacking notebooks. And if you see here, I have a U.S. history notebook um, with a little drop-down arrow next to it. And what you can do, much like you can do with folders on your desktop, is put notebooks inside of notebooks. So let's say you, one of your uh, classes is a U.S. history class. And you want to organize not only by that, but by even smaller topics, you know, the Civil Rights Movement, Cold War, World War II. You can now do that. And that way it becomes a highly organizational tool so you don't have to search through the entire U.S. history folder to find something if you know what topic it is you're looking for. Um, so the use of stacking of notebooks just adds uh, an even bigger uh, organizational tool. Uh, another tool that comes in very handy that you wouldn't be able to use um, with a regular um, paper notebook is uh, the search function. Uh, and what the search, uh, search function does is um, it allows you uh, to basically type in any, anything you want to search for inside of your Evernote book and um, it will pull up notes related to that. So let's say uh, you've been in US history, you're going back to study for an exam at some point and you want to uh, bring up stuff on the Cold War. You could type in You have to be in all, all notes, sorry, um, in order to search through all notes. Um, if, you don't, if you're not there, or if, say, say you know it's your U.S. history class, um, you should be in that one. And you can type in Cold War, and as you can see, it'll start narrowing down the search. Um, or let's just say you had a very expansive um, notebook with, you know, hundreds of notes, uh, and you were looking for something um, related to students. You type in student, and as you can see, it'll bring up anything, not only in the title, but also if you look over here, any highlighted word is student. And so that takes the organizational tool to a complete, um, completely other level um, compared to a, a standard you know, handwritten paper-bound notebook. So the stacking of notebooks, searching through notebooks, all great tools to stay organized um, for all your classes. You could have a, a folder for every class. You could have a, a, a notebook for every class. You could have um, notebooks inside of notebooks. It's really a great thing to have. So I'm going to go back into um, my U.S. history notebook real quick, and I'm going to show you um, just a few other things that Evernote allows you to do. Um, if you have um, the um, if you have the uh, app for your iPhone um, or Android. Um, Evernote gives you a few other options, one of which is the ability to take pictures and add them as notes. So let's say uh, the first day of class, um, your teacher hands out, uh, hands out a paper uh, and you want to save it. It's important. It has a lot of important information on it. What you can do is actually take your smartphone out, take a picture of it, and save it into your Evernote. And what that would look like, uh, I have one here, is something like this. And as you can see, um, if I scroll down, this is actually an entire 8 by 11 sheet of paper. And surprisingly enough, the picture quality comes out great. You can still read all the words here. And if you, you know, were to click on it, it'll actually bring up another screen that allows you to manipulate it even more. 
uh, and zoom in and you know depending on what computer you're using it'll be a different program so that provides an even greater ability you know for stuff that um, isn't directly on your computer for uh, you know um, actual physical pieces of paper um, you also have the ability if you don't have a smartphone app for it um, uh, to, instead of taking pictures you could scan pages save them as notes and so this can now go into your US history folder and be saved and will always be there uh, for you to sort through um, um, another use, not only physical pieces of paper that are handed to you, but also the use of textbooks. If you have, you know, 500,000 page textbooks, and there's certain things that you know you need to, to remember and save and want to be able to access without having to lug around your, you know, 1,000 page textbook everywhere, you can take pictures of your textbook. And I have an example of that right here. Similar to the last time, it's very clear in quality. You can still read from it and you're able to identify it um, and save it um, um, save it for later use. I have another one that's actually a map right here a picture of a map and so as you can see the possibilities seem to be coming endless. Um, you can create different notebooks to help stay organized you can search through all your notebooks very quickly and easily and you can also add physical things in there simply by taking pictures or scanning them. I want to go over one um, one quick thing um, and that's the ability of tags. Um, what tags are are um, other identifiers for your notes. Um, so if you click on the Click out of it. If you click to add a tag, um, you can give it a very basic, um, uh, a, a very basic, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, a, a identifier. So let's say you have a lot of picture of maps. You could give it a map tag. And what it'll do is actually if we go over here, we see under the tags well, that we see maps. And what that allows me to do is go to all my old notebooks. Now you can click through and see all these different tags that you've labeled for things. Let's say you keep a lot of phone numbers in here. If you give it a phone number tag, you could bring it up. Um, or recipes. If you give it a recipe tag, it'll bring up all that. So that actually gives you another way of identifying each note by something other than its title or what's found in it, and also keeping them organized in a separate manner uh, than just notebooks. Um, so uh, a lot of great uses here uh, between the notebooks, tags, um, being able to uh, add pictures and scans into it. And I'm going to do um, one more quick thing real quick. Um, if you go up to the tools option, you have the ability to uh, import folders. If you click on that, you can add any folder on to your, that's on your computer to it. And whatever note will do is any time a document is added, to um, that folder, it will add it as a note in your Evernote. Um, I should warn you, um, only certain type of documents can do this. Um, with the free account, I should say, pictures and audio files, if you want Microsoft Word files, um, something like that, you're going to have to get the upgraded. But anyways, I'm going to go to my desktop, and as you can see, um, I have two things right here. I have a PDF file and I have a folder. This is the folder I've identified Evernote or I've identified to Evernote as uh, watching. So I'm going to drag and drop this PDF in there. I'm going to come back into my Evernote. I'm going to give you the same one because there's still a Word document in there. I should take it out of there. I'm going to come back into Evernote. And if we go to all notes, we'll notice the newest one is that document. And it's in PDF format. And you can click through it. It's actually a PowerPoint saved as a PDF, but it doesn't matter. You can click through it and look at it. So it's simply just another tool to use uh, in the Evernote arsenal. Um,